Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. Today we're actually going to do part one of a two-part set on Flash Photography 101. In today's video, we're going to go through speed lights, strobes, what the difference is, what's good about them, what's bad about them, what you would use each one for, triggers, transceivers, receivers, all of this stuff, technical things to get you to a stage where you actually know what you want to get if you don't have it already. And if you do have it, what you use the bits of it for. If you haven't already, please do remember to press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. The bell icon will help you out because it'll give you a notification every single time I upload a video. I upload every week and usually more than that, mainly if I feel like it. So first thing first, let's look at a speed light. So this is a speed light. I mean, it's, it's kind of it. So the flash comes out the top there, fires a beam of light at whatever you point it at. So you can point it anywhere you want to. It usually sits with its hot shoe mount atop your camera, like so. I'm not gonna put it on because they're the wrong mounts, which we'll come to in a second. They're really good because they're super, super portable because they're so small. They're also good because they're cheap. They're very, very cost effective and you can stack multiple of them within a scene to do whatever you want to do. So great little portable things, very versatile. You can have an assistant hold the speed light and yeah, that's, that's kind of what it does. So it's got a settings panel on it, which will basically allow you to control anything you need to control, which we'll go through in part two of this little series that we're doing. And then it's usually powered by AA batteries. So the best thing you can do really is to go ahead and get yourself some rechargeable AA batteries like these ones, which are basically better for the environment because you're not binning loads of batteries and it's also better for your bank balance because you're not buying loads of batteries. So, I mean, that's kind of it. It's a speed light that's just straightforward. It does what it says on the tin and great mainly because they're so affordable. If I'm just gonna do a recommendation for an entry level starter speed light, just to dip your toe in the water, it probably would be to go ahead and try some of the Young Nuo range, which is what this is. They're cheap, they're very cheap. So if you are new and you don't have a lot of money to spend and you want to start looking at speed lights, then it is one to look at. Just as an FYI, I'm not sponsored by any of these brands at all, but if they would like to help me, then that's fine. I'm okay with that, but I'm not. So this is just all the stuff that I have and I would personally recommend. With that speed light kind of discussed, we'll move on to strobes. So I've got two strobes here. We've got the iLook strobe and the Godox strobe. I have have also used Ellen Chrome strobes and also Pro Photo strobes. All of those are just brands of strobes. The anatomy of a strobe is kind of important to know, I think, personally. So we'll run through that with the Godox. This is the, the strobe that I would recommend, um, the brand anyway, not necessarily this particular strobe, because um, Godox is again really affordable. You get loads of bang for your buck. Yeah, it's good value for money. And they're really versatile little lights. So the strobe itself will have a screen for its settings on the side. Usually it also has an integrated battery pack, but some of them are corded and not cordless. Both of these are cordless though. So the battery packs can come out, be recharged. And um, again, great, super handy. No cables going around, tripping everybody up. So the anatomy of the strobe is reasonably simple to look at if you take off the top. So the I'm hoping that you can see this, that there's like a circular bulb inside there. So the circular bulb there is like a filament and that flashes. So that gives you your flash, but that's not all. So inside any strobe is gonna be a modeling light. Now, both of these are LED but sometimes you can have the older modeling lights, which are actual bulbs. And the modeling light in this, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this, is a yellow dot, I'm hoping that you can. That yellow dot is a LED. And the same is true in this one. So in terms of the anatomy, it is good to understand. So you should be able to see there the circular bulb and the LED dot. So the modeling light, that LED that we just looked at there, if you turn it on, <laughs> I've blinded myself. <laughs> so the continuous light source there is used mainly for focusing. So in, in days gone by, it was used for basically being able to see the light fall off 
So the light over there that's lighting me up is the only thing in a very dark room that is lighting me, and that is with the LED modeling light there. So you can use it to see how the light's gonna fall within a scene, and you can also use it for focusing, which is what I tend to use it for most of the time. So having a good light source in terms of the modeling light does help us out. So you've got your modeling light there, you've got your flash tubes in, and that gives you the main bulk of your strobe there. But there's one more thing that you need to be aware of. So each strobe has a different mount on it. And some of the mounts are kind of cross brand and you'll know them probably by their name. So you've got the Bowens mount, which is what my lights are. All of my lights will be Bowens mount. Whether they are Godox or Ilux or Bowens, it doesn't matter what it is, it's the mount that's important. Others that you'll hear of, Elinchrome mount, you've got the Profoto mount, which they have their own mounting system. And then in terms of your speed lights, you will have things like the brackets, they usually call so speed light brackets. So you put your speed light on this section and then you attach a modifier to the front. We're not gonna go through modifiers today, but modifiers things like your soft boxes, beauty dishes, umbrellas, snoots, barn doors, that kind of thing. So the way that mount works is you line up your holes, slide it down, and then when you're ready to lock it in, you just give it a twist. You need to be making sure that when you're buying your strobes, you're buying your modifiers, you're doing whatever you want to do, that's fine. Just make sure that the mount is correct. So you don't want to be going ahead and buy, spending loads of money on an Ellen Chrome mount softbox if you've got Bowen's mount lights. So make sure that the mount is correct for what you're using it for. So why would you get a strobe over a speed light if a speed light is so affordable, portable, versatile and flexible? Well, the strobe has a lot more power in it. So you've got so much more bright flashlight coming out of it that you can do so many more things. It's difficult to get a speed light to comfortably overpower daylight, whereas a strobe is quite easy to have that happen. A strobe also usually has a much better battery life because it's not running off of double A's and it also tends to have a shorter flash duration. Now there are strobes for everybody's budget but what you will be paying for as you go up the ranks usually is the spec. Things like the flash duration, things like high speed sync TTL which we'll go through in the next video. The strobe kind of gives you a lot more power and a bit more of a professional outfit rather than a speed light. But obviously you're not gonna be able to put that on top of your camera. So you need to be able to use it away from the camera. This one you can put on top of your camera, but because of how portable and small it is, it's better for things like events, weddings, things where things are moving really quickly, you're better off using a speed light than a strobe. For studio work or for where you need loads of power and a reasonably high specification, your strobe is gonna be your best friend. So it's fine to have both. You can mix the two, which we'll go through in the next video. But yeah, yeah, I love the Godox AD600 Pro, but as a starter model, a recommendation for a beginner, it's worthwhile looking at the AD200s from Godox. So they're kind of like a bit of a hybrid between a strobe and a speed light but they will give you a really good starter into the world of strobes. So that would probably be my recommendation. How do you actually use these as off-camera flash units? Because what have we got on the camera here that's gonna to talk to our respective lights? Well, that's where you bring in the triggers. So these down here on the table now are the things that talk between the camera and the light. So there's four different names for these that are commonly used. You've got triggers, transmitters, receivers, and then the pairing of those, which is a transceiver. Don't worry about the terminology. It's just kind of what part of the job they're doing. When it comes to things like your strobes, most of them will have a built-in receiver, the bit that receives the command to flash. That means that you have a trigger or the bit that's sending the request to flash. That part sits on top of your camera. It's very important when you're looking at the triggers and the transmitters that you get the right one for the brand that you're working with. So for example, a Sony hot shoe is very, very different to a Nikon hot shoe. So you need to make sure that the triggers are the correct ones to fit your hot shoe. Because although this trigger here, which is actually a Nikon mount for the Ilux, although that will fit perfectly fine in my hot shoe on the Sony, it won't actually trigger the flash particularly reliably and it really shouldn't be used at all. Whereas if I got this one, which is a Sony mount, that's a Sony hot shoe mount there, that will slot straight perfectly into the Sony hot shoe there and work absolutely fine. 
And it's really important that you get the right one for your camera. Similarly, it's important when you're looking at speed lights that they have the right hot shoe mount for the camera make that you have. Like I said, I'm not gonna put this on this because that's a Nikon hot shoe and that is a Sony hot shoe. So they're not compatible. But what about a speed light? Because a speed light has the hot shoe on here. That's supposed to be sat on the camera. So if you take that away and point it at something over here, what's going to tell that to fire? If we just used a trigger, that's fine. That is that light's trigger. And um, if we just use that, that's fine. But there's nothing there to receive that signal. The strobes here have all got their receivers built in, but the speed lights don't have that. So you need the other part of the puzzle. This is the receiver. You've got your transmitter and your receiver. The speed light sits on top of your receiver, just like it's secondary hot shoe. And just like that, you've ended up with a receiver and the speed light all together and ready to go. In this situation now, you've kind of got everything you need, but how do they actually work? We're not gonna go into this in loads of detail, but essentially your trigger is working like a radio system. Dan, Dan, Jess, Mayday, Mayday. <laughs> So it works kind of like a radio system. They will have channels. Now the channel is the radio channel. So if your receiver is on channel two, for example, and your trigger is on channel one, there's nothing that you're gonna be able to do to get the two to talk to each other because they're on completely different channels. You just gotta make sure that they're on the same channel, relatively straightforward. Now, within a channel, you can also have groups. The groups refer to the strobes or the lights that are on the other side. So you can have multiple lights in each group or you can have an individual light in each group. I don't know if you remember, but on the Action In Studio video that we did the other week, I asked Dan, which one is A and which one is B for me, please? That is about groups. So I was asking Dan, which light is which group? Because then at that point, I can dial in from here without having to go anywhere near my lights the power for that particular group. So you can buy the right trigger for your lights, usually just stay within the brand. So for example, the Godox lights use the Godox trigger and that works and it's compatible with the Sony mount. So these all work together perfectly. The Ilux has its own trigger, so that will sit over here. And then the Yongnuo speed lights, the ones that I have, have their own set. So they all work together in their respective brands. And that's not to say that you can't have something that will cover all of the brands, because that does exist. Pocket Wizard is an option for a trigger system, and but for that, you will need to have some form of a connection in at the other end. It just tends to be best to stick with one brand, but you can't then mix your lights, but you can. We'll go through that in part two. So that kind of is a brief introduction to speed lights, strobes, why you would use each one, what they're good for, triggers, transceivers, transmitters, and receivers, which are the four different names for these bad boys. And basically, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, we'll stop now, start with part two, which will come out later this week. And if this has been helpful, please do let me know, drop it down in the comments below. I'll see you again really, really soon.